brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano released a letter aimed at the Italian people just a couple of days ago, and it definitely applies to you watching this outside of Italy, especially in America, in light of events of the last couple of weeks, we'll say, in the political and secular realm. In this letter, Vigano talks about the city of God versus the city of the devil and how pretty much all of our woes in our time are related to the triumphs of the city of the devil, which have happened largely with the, complicit, the complicity of the church, especially in the last half century. And by the church, we here mean the institutional church and its prelates, not the mystical body of Christ, which Vigano has said in a recent letter was are not necessarily the same thing anymore. That's a pretty hot take, by the way, from him. Many people will object to what he's saying there. But nonetheless, he frames his argument in the history of Italy. But if you're in the United States, the turbulence he describes of the past two centuries in Italy sounds like the turbulence in the United States. Indeed, all of West, the Western world went through the, the same kind of turbulence in the last two centuries. And it's really striking when you compare it to, you know, what came before, which had been relatively stable. I say relatively. By comparison to the last two centuries, Western civilization had been very stable. But nonetheless, Vigano's point here is that we will not defeat the city of the devil until we proclaim Christ as king. And we do it in our everyday actions. And we do it through our actions as Catholics, recognizing the immense social power that we have if we actually start acting like Catholics, using our purchasing power as Catholics to enact change. We can do that, he says. Again, while aimed at the Italian people, I think, especially for Americans, in light of the last few couple of weeks, this should be interesting, to, to say the least. So with that having been said, Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano. Beatus populus. City of God and the City of de the Devil in Contemporary Society. In a world that has made democracy its founding value and revolution its supreme ideological principle, it is difficult to understand how our ancestors lived before the stonecutters decided to take the Italian kingdoms through the uprisings of the Risorgimento and the revolts organized by the Carbonari and the uh, underground groups. And it is even more difficult for us who live in a secularized world in which even religion is made profane by its ministers, to understand how normal it was, even if only two centuries ago, to live in a deeply Christian society, where the faith inspired every aspect of daily life, from official events to small domestic events. Between us and that world, almost two and a half centuries have passed, during which successfully occurred the French and Austrian occupation, the wars of independence, the Revolution of 1848, the invasion of the Papal States, the unification of Italy, the First World War, the uh, interwar ideology, the Second World War, the Civil War, the Proclamation of the Republic, the Revolution of 1968, the Second Vatican Council, early 2000s international issues, the issues of clean hands, the European Union, NATO conflicts, and the events of 2020 and the present international uh, crisis. In just over two centuries, Italians have witnessed more events than their great-grandparents could ever have been able to see and recognize as subjects of the Bourbons, the Pope, or the Duke of Modena. This chaotic succession of regimes, ideologies, violence, and the progressive loss of freedom, autonomy, and identity is marked in stages by what their architects significantly call revolutions. From the French Revolution, La Revolution, to the First, Second, Third, and even Fourth Industrial Revolution, theorized by the elite. All of them have been characterized by achievements in the technical, technological, and scientific fields, which have, however, had very heavy consequences on people's lives, from being forced to emigrate to the north to pursue the dream of working in a factory after leaving the fields, to abandoning their family and their traditions, to live in the anonymity of a condominium in the suburbs and performing tasks as a telephone operator in a call center or as a writer for Just Eat. Centuries of life marked by rhythms of nature, highlighted by religious festivals and family and community events, marked by stability and made firm by ties of kinship, friendship, and business, have now been replaced by shifts on the assembly line. Office hours, commuting and lunches away from home, cramped apartments, ready meals delivered at home, nuclear families, elderly people 
separated in nursing homes, and children dispersed by the Erasmus program. It is strange that those individuals who are so concerned with sustainability are the same ones who have destroyed the ancient world on a human scale, which was essentially regulated by nature for the body and religion for the spirit, that is, by tradition, in order to exploit cheap labor, make the most of the large agricultural estates that until then were managed with a logic of mere maintenance, exploit the workforce of miners and women, exploit the energy of the steam engine to increase mass production, exploit electricity, exploit the energy of the atom, exploit, 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 and earn more, increase their wealth, reduce labor costs, take away the guarantees and protections of employees. What a mercantile mentality, what a squalor of usurers, all reduced to a source of profit, turning opportunities to an opportunity for profit. It will be said that during the 19th and 20th centuries, there were great ideals that animated Italians, with the disenchantment of those who observe the ruins of progress after the fall of so many ideologies, we can respond that today's rhetoric differs from that of the small Lombard lookout, the Cola Vendetta Lombarda, or the deeds of Ciro Minotti, only because the pretext that must legitimize the changes imposed on us has changed. First, it relied on the ideals of the homeland and freedom from the oppression of the tyrant, who was not a tyrant, and then on the ideals of class struggle and freedom from the oppression of capitalism, only to espouse its consumerist ideals then on the ideals of honesty and freedom from the oppression of corrupt politicians. Finally, on the ideals of the environment and on the duty to reduce the number of humans, which someone has decided to modu proprio to accomplish by means of the things we saw in, the, in 2020. The Risorgimento and the Great War were pretexts because they hid the true intent of the stonecutters, which was to erase the Catholic monarchies and weaken the Catholic Church, confiscating the goods of both. Democracy and the idea of the Republic were pretexts because they concealed the plan of manipulation of the masses to delude them that they could decide their own fate. And the ideas of 1968 were also pretexts whose ideals of freedom from any transcendent principle led to the legalization of divorce, the Moloch ritual and concubinage, as well as the corruption of young people and the disillusion of the family. Just as the ideals of Vatican II were pretexts with which a new mass was imposed on Catholics that no one had asked for, a new catechism that no one wanted changed, and a new secularized and sloppy priest that no one needed. The farce of the last few years was also a pretext, as we see emerging today, also in the mainstream media, after we have repeated its unheeded warnings for two years. The present international crisis was a pretext, as well as sanctions on, the, on one of the countries involved, the energy emergence, the green transition, and electronic money. So we have two worlds, a traditional world and a revolutionary world. But these two worlds, let us not deceive ourselves, are not simply the turnover from an outdated model to a model more responsive to the needs of modernity. They are two contextual realities that are contemporary with each other and opposed to one another, realities that have always marked the discrimin, the point of separation, between good and evil, between the children of light and the children of darkness, between the city of God and the city of the devil. Two realities not necessarily identified by boundaries or particular forms of government, but by the sharing of a theological vision of the world. Two sides like those we find in the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius, in the meditation of the two banners, one of Christ, supreme captain, and our Lord, the other Lucifer, mortal enemy of human nature. In the city of God, this sharing concerns all aspects of living in conformity with the Ordo Christianus, in which spiritual power and the temporal power, and a harmonious and hierarchically structured collaboration, are consistent with a profession of faith and morals taught by Christ and guarded by the church, in which the civil authority expresses the power of Christ, the king and the ecclesiastical authority, the power of Christ, the pontiff, recapitulating all things in Christ, the beginning and end, the alpha and omega. In this sense, the city of God is the inspiring model of Christian societies, and as such excludes as blasphemous the very concept of secularism of the state, as well as the idea that the church may hope for the secularization of authority or the recognition of the rights to error. In the city of God, the cosmos reigns, the divine order that the Lord summed up admirably in the Pater Noster. Adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua sicut in cielo et in terra. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven is therefore a model for the earth. The heavenly Jerusalem is a model of Christian society, which is achieved by making Christ reign, his kingdom come. It is the society of those who love God to the point of self-contempt. The citizens of the city of the devil are instead united by the revolution in which all power is exercised on the basis of force and every authority is devoid of any limit, not having to conform to any moral precept and not being exercised in the name of God, but of the adversary. Chaos, disorder, and fertile confusion reigns, so to speak, which is summed up in the Luciferian cry of non-servium and the satanic precept of do what thou wilt. 
In this tyrannical and anarchic society, there is at the same time the subversion of justice through iniquitous law, the subversion of the common good through norms that oppress the people, and rebellion against God and the encouragement of vice, sin, and blasphemy. Everything is done for personal gain, at the cost of trampling on others. Everything is motivated by thirst for power, for money, for pleasure. And where chaos reigns, Satan reigns, the rebel par excellence, the inspirer of the principles of the revolution since the Garden of Eden, the liar, the murderer. The state that is inspired by the city of the devil is not secular. It is irreligious, anti-clerical, impious, anti-christic. It oppresses with a power based on fear and terror, on coercion and force, on the ability to criminalize good individuals and to exalt the evildoers through deception and lies. In the city of the devil, ecclesiastical and civil authority is eclipsed by subversives who ex exercise it against the ends for which it was intended. The embedded church in the church and the embedded state in the public realm. It is a society of those who love themselves to the point of contempt for God. We and all of you who are gathered here for the National Day of Liberty in Veritate find ourselves belonging ideal to the city of God, but this citizenship does not find a concrete reality in which to act, in which to contribute to the bonum commune, that is, Catholics who would like to promote both in the church and in public affairs. It is as if we had the passport of a nation whose location we do not know on the globe, but of which we find traces now in Hungary, now in Poland, now in Brazil, now even in the Great Bear of the East, and unexpectedly also among other exiles like us who know very well what we are referring to, who feel, who like us feel in some way like like outsiders. And when we hear uh, members of, Cong of the U.S. Congress and the Party of Moloch declaring that the big great bear of the east is an orthodox country with traditional values that is why it must be destroyed whatever the price paid by the u.s we feel spiritually linked to that people because of the common persecution we endure from the enemies of god the same feeling of extraneousness to the church as it shows itself today eclipsed by a corrupt hierarchy and also subservient to the city of the devil makes us feel in some way exiles even as catholics banished from the city as at rigidity commodity indictisti or inability to accept as normal that a pope can give scandal with heresies, idolatrous acts, provocations, and temperate acts and lies, humiliating the Church of Christ and making fun of conservative cardinals and bishops who timidly express their dissent, for indocility in refusing to follow the broad way, for the sense of abandonment of children by their father, for the pain of seeing us handed stones and scorpions by those who should feed us bread and fish. We look for a priest and find instead a great party official. We see a word of comfort and they respond to us with contempt. That is when they do not completely ignore us. Let us look at what the church once was and let us not resign ourselves to accepting what it has become also because of our silences, our erroneous concept, con concept of obedience. But the church militant on earth is not the city of God because like all spiritual realities immersed in the flow of time, it welcomes weak people marked by sin, the good and the bad. Only in eternity will wheat and the tares be separated, one to be gathered in the granary and the other to be thrown into the fire. Nor should we confuse the city of God with the confessional state, which includes good and bad citizens, honest people and criminals. Let us not dare to confuse the earthly church with the city of the devil, with which we should separate ourselves, considering ourselves chosen and pure. Not even the state is the, the city of the devil if its authority is exercised according to the model of the virtues of government. We are children of the church and citizens of holy Jerusalem, and we are citizens of the nation in which providence wanted us to be born. How then can we recognize the city of God, and how can we recognize the city of the devil? We are the ones who must build the city of God, or rather we must be inspired by it to rebuild with wisdom and humility, a society that returns to our Lord the crown and scepter that belong to him, and that two centuries of revolution have taken away from him. No matter what the form of government, the task of every Catholic as a citizen is to ensure that all areas of civil society are permeated by the faith and Christian morals, oriented to the common good, to the glory of God, and to the salvation of souls. The baptized person has a similar duty, to ensure that all areas of religious life, prayer, mass, sacraments, catechism, works of charity, the Christian education of children, do not follow the fashions or the rerum novarum cupida tas, but instead keep intact what the Lord taught the apostles, and what the Holy Church guards intact through the centuries. The winds of novelty are in fact a distinctive sign of the revolution, both in the civil and in ecclesiastical spheres. And in order for Christ to return to be king of our nation, it is necessary, first of all, that each of us be a consistent witness of the faith that professes, that confirms, in fact, adherence to the principles of religion, especially with regard to the family, the education of children, and the conduct of one's life. The city of the devil is easily identifiable, and once it has been recognized, it must be fought against bravely, because it is at war with the city of God, and will not hesitate to use any means to weaken us, to corrupt us, to make us succumb. 
the elites, the UN, the various philanthropic philanthropic foundations of Stonecutter Origin, together with the governments and international organizations that support them, including the Bergoglian Church, as well as infiltrators in every central and peripheral dicastery, are the earthly realization of the city of the devil, and its citizens make no secret of their ideology of death, of the will to erase and subvert what remains of Christian civilization by opposing inhuman ways of life, making every trace of good disappear, not only from the social behaviors, but also from people's thoughts. Christ must be removed from minds after tearing him out of hearts, and minds must be connected with artificial intelligence and create a being in which the image and likeness of God are monstrously warped. And remember well, there can be no truce between the two cities, because they are and will be sworn enemies, as are our Lord and Satan. But at the same time, the all-out war we are fighting in is inexorably destined for our victory, because Christ has already definitively conquered Satan on the wood of the cross. What awaits us is only the final phase of this clash, the outcome of which is very certain, because it is based on the promise of the Savior. Here, then, are your objectives which as lay people you have the burden and honor of having to translate to social and political action, to promote the social kingship of Christ according to the model of the city of God and in conformity with the order willed by the Lord, and to fight the, fight the elite revolution, the last tremendous phalanx of the city of the devil, with actions of formation, denunciation, and boycott. Because it is true that with the help of prayer we can implore many graces from divine majesty, it is also true that as Catholics we have sufficient significant numbers to give a clear and strong signal to those companies, to those financial groups, those information management centers that live to the that live thanks to the customers who choose them. If we do not start if we if we start not buying products from these multinational companies, system aligned companies, television programs, or social platforms that do not respect our religion, we force many to retrace their steps and complicate the propaganda of the uh, new order of the ages the lies of the mainstream and the falsification of the international crisis. We therefore openly disavow the false dogmas of the James Martin ideology, as well as the Laudato Si program, the energy crisis, and uh, Elon Musk's favorite pastime. And we try above all to give an overall view to the subversive action of the city of the devil, showing the coherence of individual initiatives with the global plan, the means that it intends to adopt and with the real and unmentionable ends that it sets itself. Finally, allow me to greet the organizers of this event, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to address you with this message. The numerous supporters of this day of formation make us understand that the deployments of being formed, and that so many souls thirsting for God are willing to fight and to commit to ensuring a peaceful future for their children to stop this insane race towards perdition. Signed, Carla Maria Viganò, Archbishop. I think that letter was fairly straightforward, honestly. So there were some, you know, bits of Italian history there, but I don't think they're relevant to the overall point. This letter is applicable to everybody watching this anywhere you're watching this in the world right now. You may take a different position than him on the big international conflict going on. It's understandable. A lot of people do. A lot of people lost trust in him because of what he thinks he said about that. That's fine. But his overall point, I think, is pretty spot on. We are living in the city of the devil. That's just simply is that. And by city, we mean civilization. You know, this, he's, this is the second letter in a row where he has made this city of God versus the city of the devil thing, which is sort of a, a representing of the city of God and the city of man from St. Augustine. But it's the same concept, really, that you have the, you know, the mystical king, you know, the kingdom of Christ, you know, the reign of Christ the king versus that of his adversary. And we live in a world of his adversary's reign. And we'll live in that world until the triumph of the Immaculate Heart. And what will bring that about? When Catholics begin living like Catholics again, in large enough numbers. That's what will really happen. And Vigano's point here is to seek sanctity. To act as Catholics and stop really getting cozy with the evils of this world. Easier said than done for a lot of us, I suspect. Let me know what you thought of this in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. Share this on social media if you can. That helps a lot as well. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.